Hey everybody, and thanks for clicking on this video and checking out my channel, and joining me for another MCU review. Leading up to Avengers Endgame, I'm looking back at all the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies in preparation for the big event. If you'd like to join me for this journey, I welcome you to do so, and I'd love for you to do so, so we can talk about these movies together. And if you have been joining me for this journey, thank you so much. So we're currently in Phase 2 of the MCU, and we're on the second entry of Phase 2, Thor The Dark World. If you'd like to talk about this movie, I'd love for you to do so, and I'd love to get a conversation started with you. Leave your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments section, and let's get a fun conversation going. With all that out of the way, let's move on and talk about Thor, The Dark World. So Thor, The Dark World was directed by Alan Taylor, and takes place after the Avengers movie. When Jane Foster stumbles upon a power source known as the Aether, she awakens Malekith, a dark elf who's determined to use the Aether to destroy the Nine Realms. It's up to Thor to keep Jane safe and make sure the Aether doesn't fall into Malekith's hands. This movie gets an incredibly bad rep, which I can see where the criticisms come from after rewatching it. It is a little dull. Some of the scenery is very gray and dark and not interesting to look at, and the cinematography isn't always the best. But watching this movie back again, there's a lot that I like in it. We get to see Thor in a leadership role and take charge as the Asgardian prince. We also get to see how his character has changed since the first film. He's so much more level-headed, he's not so much of a hothead. We see him in battle sequences, and the way that he handles the battles in this movie is so different from the arrogant way that he handled them at the beginning of the first Thor movie. This movie also gives us the most of Asgard that we've ever seen in any of the other movies. We get to see them train, we get to see them actually just be in their environment and how they live and socialize. And I just feel like we get to explore the area more than we ever get to do in any of the other movies. Which is my favorite parts of this movie. I love being on Asgard. I like seeing what it's like. I want to spend time there. This is an other world. I don't want to spend time on Earth like in the first movie. I want to spend time in this other world and get invested in this universe. It's fun to see how their tech works, how their architecture in the buildings are. And it's also cool to see Thor have all these interactions with all these people on Asgard. Thor's friends in this movie, the Warriors 3 and Lady Sif, get a lot of time in this movie to really shine. They get to be a part of the battle sequences. They get to show their loyalty to Thor. And we really get to see how Thor relies on these people and why they're so important important in his life. And I just really like that group of people together. I think they're a fun gang to spend time with. I found this movie had a lot of fun action sequences as well. The sequence where Thor, Loki, and Jane are escaping from Asgard and they have the space battle kind of going on looks really good. It's really thrilling and the effects on it really hold up. I really enjoyed that sequence of the film. And although it's very short and gets very little screen time in the movie, I love seeing Thor and Loki team up to get off Asgard and go on this revenge mission together. We really do get the sense that these guys are siblings. They argue, they bicker, Loki makes sarcastic comments to Thor, Thor gets annoyed, they fight, and then they end the fight with laughter and, and a comedic exchange between the two. And I just wish that this movie let us see more of that. I felt Natalie Portman's character in this movie wasn't very different from how she was in the first film. I felt like Natalie Portman still brought the enthusiasm and fascination when it came to science. And when she's on Asgard, she's really fascinated by how their tech works and how their science works and how it's really relatable and kind of similar to how stuff on Earth is and how that machinery works. But the chemistry with Natalie Portman and Chris Hemsworth feels very weak this time around. And I also feel like for the majority of the film, this character of Jane Foster is just used as a MacGuffin. Because when the Aether really gets inside of Jane, she really becomes the item that Malekith is pursuing and the item that Thor has to keep away from Malekith. Other than that, she doesn't really contribute that much to the story anymore. And speaking of Malekith, let's talk about him. This is universally known as the worst MCU villain and... I definitely agree with that. He is the worst. I feel really bad for the actor who plays him, because I'm sure the makeup and the prosthetics that they had to put on him took hours, and was probably a painful, annoying, and gruesome process to go through. But while the film gives him a backstory and tries to give him a motivation, this character just feels like he has no depth to him, he brings no presence when he's on screen, and he's just a really uninteresting character. And I'm sure the actor's doing the best that he can with the material that he's given, but he's just not interesting. And whenever they cut back to Malekith, this movie slows way down. Which also brings me to another negative in this movie, the scenes on Earth. The scenes on Earth just drag this movie down. The pacing just slows way down. The movie almost comes to a stop when we get to these Earth scenes. Because when we're on Asgard, this sci-fi, magical, mystical, epic place, it's interesting. I like learning about the world. I want to learn about the world. I want to spend time on this world. When we cut back to Earth, we're spending time with Darcy, Dr. Eric Salvik, and Darcy's new intern, whose name I don't even remember. And all these Earth scenes are is telling us the same things that we're learning on Asgard, but with these characters, because these characters need to be in the movie, probably because these actors have contracts. But when we go back to Earth, we're learning nothing new. We're just learning what we learned in Asgard, but we're watching these characters learn the same thing. And those scenes on Earth just feel like a detour or a pit stop of the story because we already know what they're teaching us in those scenes. And it also adds some comedy to the film that honestly falls really flat for me. I don't find the comedic exchanges and the comedy moments in this movie 
very funny. They almost come off as a little cringy, a little awkward, a little desperate, a little forced at times. And there's nothing quite worse than watching a comedy set bomb. But I get why those scenes are there. These actors need to be in the movie. They have contracts. And they all do come together in the final act battle. But those scenes just feel repetitive and unnecessary to me. And I wouldn't mind if they were cut out of the film and we got to spend more time on Asgard. In the end, I can see why this could be people's least favorite MCU movie. It's definitely got flaws and it's not always the most interesting. But for me, it's not the least of the MCU movies. I do find things in it that I like. Mainly the direction. I just like the way that this movie is shot more than I do the first film. And also the spectacle of the movie is bigger and better than I find the first one. And I find the scenes on Asgard with Thor and Loki very enjoyable and I love watching those characters team up. Though I do wish we got to see more of that in the movie. But this movie really does get dragged down by a weak villain, repetitive and unnecessary scenes and storylines on Earth, with characters that don't necessarily feel like they need to be here. And I think this movie would have benefited if they just cut that stuff out and went full on Asgard sci-fi fantasy epic. You could still have Jane find the ether and have her on Asgard, but just cut out the Earth scenes that feel unnecessary and repetitive, and also the characters that bring kind of cringy and bad comedy to the movie. At least in my opinion they do. Overall though, I don't think Thor The Dark World is a bad movie. I do find enjoyment in it, just some parts more than others. Guys, thanks again for clicking on this video and checking out my channel and talking some MCU with me. What do you think of Thor The Dark World? Are you one of those that find it to be your least favorite in the MCU? Comment down below, let me know. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on it. Guys, we are moving along fast in Phase 2 and in the MCU, and I'm going to be back soon talking more MCU movies. If you'd like to join me for this journey, I welcome you to do so, and I'd love for you to do so. I'd love to talk about these movies with you, all the way up until we hit Avengers Endgame. Guys, once again, my name's Zachary Milne. Thanks for talking movies with me, and I hope you have yourself a great day.